Hi friends, you are welcome in this tutorial where we will be today learning about restriction map constructions for any circular DNA and plasmids. This mapping is slightly different from the restriction mapping of a linear DNA fragment which we learnt in the earlier tutorial. Hopefully you tried to solve the problems I gave you as a practice question in the last tutorial. Here is my answer. Let's see how we got this. Hindi 3 and Eco R1 enzymes produce two fragments each. For a linear DNA, if two fragments are produced, that means the enzyme cuts the DNA only once. Here we place the Hindi 3 site first and there can be two combinations here, either this way or this way. Now we place Eco R1 sites such that it produces 14 KB and 4 KB fragments. Now let's merge. One possibility from each single digestion such that they create Eco R1 Hindi 3 double digestion fragments. Now place BGL2 restriction sites. Since three fragments are generated upon double digestion, we expect two restriction sites from BGL2. Between BGL2 single digestion and BGL2 Eco R1 double digestion, 3 and 9 KB fragments are common. If we remove them, then 6 KB BGL2 single digest fragment divides into 1 and 5 KB fragments of BGL2 Eco R1 double digest. So let's place it in such a manner that Eco R1 is present in between two BGL2 sites, cutting BGL2 fragment. Take any one possibility. This gen arrangement also generates BGL2 Hindi 3 double digest fragment sizes. Hence, this is the correct map. That was interesting like a puzzle. Let's see another problem, but this time based on a circular DNA molecule, which is a 2625 base pair and when singly or doubly digested with XBA1 and SAC1 enzymes produces the following fragments. We have to prepare a restriction map for this DNA. Restriction mapping for a circular DNA is slightly different from that of a linear DNA. Here one cut linearizes the molecule, two cuts will produce two fragments, and three cuts will produce three fragments and so on. Keeping this in mind, let's solve this problem. Both XBA1 and SAC1 produce two fragments, hence they both cut this DNA twice. We can begin with any one. Also we do not have any 3' prime or 5' prime direction issues here, hence only one possibility. Now we place SAC1 restriction sites keeping in mind double digest products too. We observe that 965 base pair fragment is also present in double digest. That means between the two XBA1 sites, there is no SAC1 site to disturb it. We will try to place SAC1 sites outside of XBA sites like this. Restriction mapping of circular DNA is important as it is performed to create restriction maps of plasmids. What are plasmids and why they are important? Plasmids are small, circular, double-stranded DNA molecules found naturally in many bacteria. Their size can vary from 0.1% to 5% of that of bacterial DNA size, which is roughly around 1000 base pair to a few thousand base pair. Plasmids carry a few genes which can be advantageous to the bacteria like genes for antibiotic resistance or for bacterial conjugation. Plasmids can replicate independent of chromosomal replication, hence can produce multiple copies. This is a very useful feature for cloning. Because of their small size and the ease of isolation, plasmids have been used as cloning vectors. As cloning vectors, they can be used to carry a foreign DNA or gene of interest into the recipient cells like bacteria, where they multiply to produce several copies of the foreign DNA 
and as the bacteria divide they carry the copy of these plasmid vectors with the DNA of our interest. They can also be used to express the foreign gene to produce the protein of interest. These plasmids are called expression vectors. This is PBR322 plasmid, one of the earliest plasmids used as cloning vector. Its map shows two antibiotic resistant genes for ampicillin and tetracycline, an origin of replication, and a few restriction sites on plasmid backbone. These restriction sites were used to clone the gene of interest in such a manner that one of the antibiotic res resistance genes was destroyed and then selection was done for the second antibiotic. Then the vectors were genetically engineered or manipulated to have multiple useful features. Let's have a look at important features of a plasmid. Origin of replication or ORI. Plasmids carry a special DNA sequence called ORI for origin of replication. This helps the plasmids to make identical copies of their DNA, which can range from one to few thousands per cell. Second important feature is MCS or multiple cloning site or a polylinker, which I'm going to elaborate soon. Third important feature is antibiotic resistance gene used as selectable markers, which are usually naturally present in a plasmid like genes for ampicillin resistance or tetracycline, chloramphenicol or canamycin resistance, etc. They can be used to select transformed versus untransformed bacterial cells. Besides that, there will be there are some blue-white colony selection features or features for isolating single-stranded DNA or some of the expression vectors also have bacteriophage promoters. These features, which may or may not be present in all plasmid vectors, help in selection of transformed versus non-transformed clones like in blue-white colony selection where we have the LAC-Z gene and LAC-I gene inserted. Besides, bacteriophage promoters like T3, T7, etc. are found in expression vectors next to MCS, which help in directed RNA synthesis, followed by translation through bacterial ribosomes. Here, a gene of interest can be cloned in MCS within the LAC-Z gene fragment, which helps in blue-white colony selection. For the recombinant DNA technique, we will mainly focus on MCS and learn its features. Multiple cloning site or MCS or polylinker is a synthetic short segment of DNA with several unique restriction sites. MCS is present in engineered plasmids and helps in cutting the plasmid at a certain position without disturbing any other features. Typically, a MCS will have around 20 uh, restriction sites for different enzymes which are not present in the plasmid naturally. Each site in MCS is therefore unique and cuts the plasmid only once. This is not only useful for cloning a gene of interest in a particular location of the plasmid but also provides us the choice of several enzymes in a small region. Usually, we choose any two restriction enzymes whose sites are present within the MCS but not within the gene of interest to cut the plasmid. These, there are many commercially available plasmid vectors with MCS. Here we see MCS of a plasmid called PUC19. This vector also has additional features like blue-white colony selection, etc. Creating a restriction map of a plasmid helps us to figure out the restriction size uh, other than MCS available in the plasmid backbone as well as how many fragments will be produced. These features can be used later in selection or validation of cloning experiments. Here we see the restriction map of PUC19. Outside of MCS, there are some more restriction sites. Let's see if we digest this plasmid with AFL3 NDE1 and AAT2 in double and triple digestion. What will be the expected fragment sizes on gel? 
Since total size of PUC 19 is 2686 base pair and we can see 0 on plasmid backbone and all the restriction sites on plasmid backbone with base pair number written means they where exactly they will cut the plasmid. It's easy to calculate then. Also, since each of these sites occur only once, a single digestion will only produce a linearized fragment of same size as plasmid. For double digestion combinations of AFL3 with NDE1 double digestion, for AFL3 with AAT2 double digestion, for NDE1 plus AAT2 double digestion, and AFL3 plus NDE1 plus AAT2 triple digestion. Let's try some more problems for practice. In this practice question 1, you see a gel picture on left which shows bands from the restriction digestion of a 2500 base pair plasmid with BAMH1, PSD1 from single or double digestion. Using this data, Place the restriction sites for BAMH1 and PST1 on this plasmid to create a restriction map. Also tell how many restriction sites are present for BAMH1 and PST1 in this plasmid. One more practice question. Here the restriction map of PBR32 of 3760 base pair size has been given in which a gene of interest XYZ has been cloned using KPN1 restriction sites. Study the map, map carefully and calculate and place the restriction fragment bands in a gel picture as shown here. Also calculate the size of the gene of interest which is XYZ in base pair. So this was our tutorial about plasmid and their restriction mapping. Hopefully you learned something new and could understand the concepts Try practice questions and post answers in comment section or wait to match them in the beginning of my next tutorial video which will be about recombinant DNA technique using restriction maps. Please like and subscribe my channel uh, to keep me going. See you soon. Bye bye and thank you.